Let's continue with part two of the transformation of salvation. We're looking at aspects in Romans, the sixth chapter. Let's look specifically now in verse four. Therefore, we've been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Satan generally tempts us, but actually it's Satan, demons, a fallen world. Scripture gets even more specific in how we specifically can be tempted, and we'll cover one of those specific areas in just a little bit. But it is not Satan directly who's tempting us. Satan is not omnipresent like God. God can be everywhere. Satan is, can only be one place at one time. So can the demons. So if Satan could get around to all of us, uh, some guess that perhaps if he tried to visit everybody, maybe he could get to most of us once in our lifetime, but not very often. Demons can be involved, but oftentimes it is just a fallen world system. And also it's our own desires inside, which the Lord deals with that before, during, and after salvation. In our temptations, how can we be tempted? Are we not, after salvation, alive in Christ? Yes, we are. We need to remember that. We're also dead in Christ, co-crucified in Christ, and buried in our Lord's death, which brings the question, how can a dead body then be tempted? The Greek there is thanatos. It, in its first meaning, is the death of a physical body, the normal meaning that we think of in death. But in the Greek New Testament, it also means spiritual death and the accompanying judgment but we'll cover that aspect in a different day. It really means to be in the sense of dead. This is being dead in Christ. We're buried into his death. We see this in churches that baptize by immersion. Most of us that baptize by immersion, if you'll notice, we baptize and we bring them backwards as if placing them in a grave. Then we quote the passage, raised to walk in newness of life. We bring them back up out of the water, facing forward. This is a clear sign of the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, as pictured in Romans, the sixth chapter. The question comes up, if all these things have happened in a Christian's life, then why are we still tempted? Well, we still have earthly bodies. And in Romans, the seventh chapter, there in verse 17, our old bodies have indwelling sin. Now that's not an excuse, just as we should not use grace as an excuse to sin. We should not use the excuse of, well, I just have indwelling sin, so I'm just gonna keep sinning. It's not an excuse, it is an explanation. The shorter version of that, and someday, if you want, we'll cover the longer version. The shorter version is, yes, a Christian can be tempted to sin, and a Christian can sin. They do not have God's permission, but indeed it can it will on occasion occur, even though we're dead in Christ. What are we to do? Well, let's remember in the context of being in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Having called upon Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when we call upon him, he's the one that saves us. Salvation is the work of God. And when God saves us, we are dead in Christ we're co-crucified in Christ, we're buried in Christ, and we're raised to walk in newness of life. All of these things are true after we're saved. The aspects of the past are the judgment that occurred on the cross. The Lord took our sin debt, the wrath due to us. He took that on the cross. If you remember last week, we were looking at he who knew no sin he made him who knew no sin to be sin on our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Jesus bore our sin and he transmuted his righteousness to us in the act of saving us, salvation itself. Future judgment, a Christian should have no fear because our judgment already occurred in Christ on the cross in his death as we were co-crucified with him. The judgment has already occurred. And even on earth, we understand that double jeopardy, a person cannot or should not be tried twice for the same crime. In Christ Jesus, since all of these things have already occurred, 
not only has the judgment occurred, but the sentence has been carried out by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He bore our sin debt. He bore the wrath of God that was due to us because of our rebellion and sin. It's already been carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That's what's being emphasized, part of what's being emphasized in Romans, the sixth chapter. We were guilty, but Jesus paid it all for us. So we're free even now, from the penalty of sin that was done, that was carried out in God's sentence, both in the judgment and the sentence on the cross itself. So we're already free from the penalty of sin. We're also free from the power of sin all the time. No, we've still got Romans 7, 17, that in dwelling sin we can and will be tempted. And when we are not filled with the Holy Spirit and obedient to God at those points. Yes, we will sin. But please notice that we are free from the power of sin when we're relying upon God, John the 15th chapter. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Apart from me, you can do nothing. But also in Ephesians the 5th chapter, verse 18, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit, God produces his righteousness in us, which displaces and is victorious over sin, even temptation. Now, ultimately, we'll be free from the presence of sin in the future. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, there in verse 13. We look forward to the future resurrection. We'll get brand new, glorified, eternal bodies that will no longer have indwelling sin connected with them. These will be glorified, eternal bodies. At that point, we will not be tempted. God has made all these provisions for us. But in the meantime... As we rely upon God, John 15, and we're filled with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 5, 18, we do not have to sin. We have victory over sin. And being filled with the Spirit, God, through us, is victorious over temptation and sin itself. Now, in, our, in part three, we'll look also in Romans chapter 6 about that we're crucified, buried, and alive in Christ. So join us for part three. And let's get to the other aspects of our victory in Jesus.